Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Do More Designer Element Browser. The Element Browser in the Do More Designer software will display valid memory locations, add documentation, and show you how to cast from one memory type to another. We will be discussing the Element Browser and how to take advantage of this in your Do More program. Now, detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. Now calling up the Do More Element Browser, and it's very easy to and call up the Element Browser, use the main menu, search, and then Element Browser. And that um, you can also use F9 on your keyboard and it will call up the Element Browser for you as well. Now, when the program view is in normal display mode, not in edit mode or status on, the element browser can be invoked by double clicking on the element or highlight with the cursor and pressing enter. So right now I'm not in my edit mode, so I can double click on this X0 and it will bring up the element browser and you will notice it's intuitive so it knows which element you actually click on or the, y, the Y1 or the output one, it'll call up the element browser. You can also highlight it, like I said, and hit enter, and it will call it up. So several different ways. When we're in the edit mode, and we're writing our ladder logic, when we highlight this uh, unit, double click it, you will see that now we have this, that I'll ask us for our input. To the right hand side when we click this we will actually get our element picker for this uh, contact and it shows just you our used addresses right here and we can select from there you'll also notice there's a uh, icon up here which looks like a magnifying glass when you hit that it actually brings up our element browser for us and again it's intuitive for this x0 contact So, several different ways of bringing it up. Now, you'll notice that the element picker in the Do More Designer can be changed to the element browser using the main menu, view, and then into the options. If we look at the global setting, you can see down here under F9, when F9 is hit, the element browser field launches the element picker but we can change that to browser. Now I'd recommend not to do that because the element picker has some nice features as well that will help you or aid you in your programming. So we're gonna leave that as a default. So let's now take a look at the elements of that um, element browser of our Do More Designer software. So the, the element browser dialog is uh, divided into three areas. The first is the element detail, which is located right here. And it shows the documentation for the currently selected element. If the element is not at, not being edited somewhere else in the system, like the nickname, extra info, and description fields are enabled, and you may edit, edit them here. So even if I'm in um, program mode, so let's just exit there, and or off, we're not in edit mode, but we're in normal viewing mode. We'll double click on there. And what you'll see is that we actually can see all the documentation and editing that we want on there. So the description fields are enabled when you edit them here. And their source element. This field is always displaying the current selected element. And if the element is an unsigned nickname, the element source field can um, field will be blank. Now nickname, nicknames must be unique and can be 1 to 16 characters in length. Nicknames must begin with an alphanumeric character or an underscore. Nicknames consist of any combination of alphanumeric characters and underscores with no spaces or punctuation marks are allowed. It must begin with a letter or an underscore. Extra info is a 16 character user assigned name for an element. If the extra info field is being used as symbolic uh, 
constant, this will contain a numeric entry. In the description, a 132 character field can be used to provide a detailed description of the element. We also have valid ranges, which are located right here, and it displays uh, a list of the valid ranges of elements for the content, or the current content, and how the element browser was invoked controls what displays in the valid uh, range list. So select mode. This mode is enabled by clicking the magnifying glass icon while editing an instruction or pressing the F9 key while in the latter editor. In this mode, the element browser used to as a guide in selecting a valid controller data uh, element for your instruction you are editing. Since the element browser was called from a ladder editor, the ranges of the elements display will be correct for the current instruction. And then we have a browse mode, and this mode is enabled by opening the element browser from the menu or clicking the magnifying glass icon on the toolbar. In this mode, the element browser is used to display the complete list of the ranges for the current controller. Instead of the select button, there is an exit button. Now, a range by selects the sorting order for the valid ranges uh, list from the following. You have memory location, sorts the list from the memory configuration order. Name, sorts the list alphabetical by name. And data size. So sorts the list by the size of the elements, constant, bits, words, uh, D words, or structures. And then finally, our third is our nicknames. And nicknames display a list of the user assigned nicknames and optionally the system defined nicknames that fall within the range of the elements in the current uh, valid ranges list. When the select mode, double click on the, the nickname, adds or selects the nickname and exits the browser. Highlighting a nickname with a single uh, click makes it current selected element. All right, so the include nicknames when, when enabled System defined nicknames will be included in the list and include nickname uh, users. When enabled, user assigned nicknames will be included in the list and filter on selected range. When enabled, only nicknames that are in the same range as selected items will be displayed in the list. And assigned names. Assigned names button displays the assigned names dialog where you can associate any unassigned nickname with an element. So, and you'll see that right here. So we can exit of that now. And now what we can do is take a look at actually our, some working examples here. Now when we call up our element browser, in the several different ways we have, you can see here that it will actually show the browser addresses for the controller that you're actually uh, operating right now. In my case here, we are actually using a uh, Do More Bricks uh, PLC or BRX. So our system status bits. Now, everything here uses a strong uh, typing in the Do More program. Now, Do More program uh, data is strongly typed, and strongly typed means that the controller is aware of what the size and format of each element and uses the data as appropriate with the without additional guidance from the user. So data blocks consist of elements of the same type. So the first thing we'll do is when we look at the data ranges here, you can see that we have the uh, system um, status bits, values and date, and time structure and numbering systems. And again, uh, system areas are not configurable, so they're fixed. So we have the ST area, which is right here. And you can see how our nicknames are all coming up. So if we want a 100 millisecond um, location, it's right here. Or you look down here and we see that we have the first scan. So several different options for this for their system bits. And we have our double words, um, or, or sorry, our SDD, or DST. So right here, and all of those system bits, we have um, the time and date ones, and then we have our UDT. Next, what we have is our physical inputs and outputs, and we have our X and Y. We have our 
which are all bits. Then we will have our signed uh, words, uh, W, X for inputs, or analog inputs, W, Y for analog outputs. And we have our RX and RY, which is our real numbers and floating. Next, we have our internal bits that we can use within our program. So we have our C bits, our V unassigned memory words, our signed words, our double signed words, and our real or floating. Then we have timers and counters. So you can see it, it's quite a list of, that we actually can call from using our uh, Do More Designer. So we have uh, timers and counters. We have uh, a long string, which contain up to 256 characters. We also have a short string, which is 64 characters each. Then we have our communications. And under our communications, we have our peer link that we've discussed before. We have the um, previous case series and linking for them in the Octal system. Then we have our Modbus numbering system, which we've uh, also discussed previously. So we have bits, inputs and outputs, and we have uh, uh, words. So then we have what we call casting in our element browser. Now, casting just means that we're going to convert from one to another. So if we hit the show cast builder on our element browser, this will come up on the bottom of your screen right here, bottom of your element browser window. So in the bricks do more controller, there are three types of casting. The extraction cast will isolate a bit a byte or a word from a larger element. So the first one, and you can see it right here. So if we were to look at, um, let's say a V memory, and we want to look at the bit. So one bit of that, we can specify which bit number we want here. And you will see now our element comes up as a V0 colon three, which means bit number three of V0 word. That can also go for a double. And we can look at the bit of a double word. Again, if we go five, you'll see that D05. We can also go the byte of the word that returns only the byte of that word, which is right there. And we can do the, you see it has the byte number zero to three to represent the uh, double word that we have specified up here. So if we said uh, one or two, then double word by two that we're going to be returning. We can also go word. So you'll see again now a double word contains two, so we can specify which which one of the double word that we want to return. So D0, W1. So extraction basically extracts the information from the actual memory location. Next we have um, aggregation casts, which group multiple elements into a larger element itself. So if we look at say C0, we can then turn that into a word. And, and what it will do is we can then say it's a signed word or an unsigned word turn into an unsigned word. So that's what we do. So we'll now take C0 to C15, which is the first 15, combines that into a 16-bit word for us. We can also go a double word and it will take the, um, and turn into a sign word. So we'll take 32. So the first 32 bits starting at C0 and now that combines into a double word for us. So aggregation groups them together. And the last way we can cast is actually a format cast. And you can see that we've been doing this all along. We've got signed, unsigned, and real over here for the format. So if we look at say, um, let's look at uh, X0 or C0. And we go to a word. And you can see here, we can cast a sign or unsign. We can look at the double word. 
and we can actually cast that into a real value. So the element value or the um, cast builder is very useful and highly recommended um, and very simplistic to use in our Do More Designer software. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.